What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Um, I'm trying to catch the sunrise this morning, but before I get started on my work, I wanted to do a video about fluid dynamics, um, specifically positive pressure versus negative pressure. So there's a couple different applications um, for using fluid dynamics in mycology, and I guess I wanted to focus on the laboratory aspect and the fruiting, fruiting room aspect as well. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to note that I'm going to be releasing some new strains this week. Um, we've finally got our uh, the Black Falcon Oyster QC, which I'm really excited about that one. Um, I also have a Blue Falcon Oyster, which is um, very similar. It's just blue, but it's uh, from Missouri. So super excited to release those, as well as the Namiko or Namico. Um, those mushrooms are spot on, definitely to our standard. So as soon as I pull those syringes, I'll put them up on Etsy. Um, so our Etsy is Fresh Fungi. Just be very careful that you're going through our link in the description. So if you follow Etsy, type in Fresh Fungi, and then you should have uh, our, our page, which is Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Um, so make sure that you're going through our website and our link directly. You can also find that on our website, freshfromthefarmfungi.com. All right, guys. So I guess I'll start this video off with a question, um, multiple choice question here. So in a BSL-3 lab, biosafety level 3, um, what type of pressure is necessary to maintain that status? So BSL-3 lab, what kind of pressure do you need? A, negative. B, positive, C, neutral, or D, none of the above. All right, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to answer that question. Um, I'm going to be designing my new lab, so I'm trying to, you know, have all of these uh, thoughts in my head as I'm constructing my lab and thinking of the layout. So what is a fluid? I guess that's the first important thing. So a fluid is somewhere between a solid state and a vacuum. So water is a fluid, air is a fluid, the air that we breathe right now is a fluid. So it's hard to imagine, but there's millions of different particles floating in this room right now. And even though it feels pretty still, there's definitely some, you know, seams in the window. And as the wind from the outside moves past my house, there's going to be disturbances in the fluid. And that is going to lead to particles lifting off the ground or being pulled from the ceiling. So imagine your room as an ocean of particles and different air molecules. There's oxygen, there's CO2, and all of those have their own um, mass, and they're going to find their position in different areas throughout the room. So just try to have this in mind when you're working in your lab as well. Um, it's good to think of the air as a current or a fluid like the ocean, and little droplets of contaminants are going to be everywhere. I'm sure you're familiar with Archimedes' principle, but that's another really conceptual way to imagine what a fluid is. So if you um, enter a bathtub that's full, it's going to overflow with the same volume as whatever is placed into the bathtub. So that is Archimedes' principle. The same principle applies with air. So if you're working in a still air box, for example, and you place your arms into the box, that is going to displace the air, and it's going to come out directly at you. The same is going to apply when you're entering your laboratory. So if you open up the door of your lab, it's going to pull air out, and then as you shut the door and enter, it's going to disturb all the fluid or the air inside of your lab. So that leads us to positive pressure. So what is positive pressure? Positive pressure is fluid being pushed into a defined area. Um, so this can help keep bugs and contamination out of the room because it's constantly forcing air outside. So when you're when you're doing positive pressure or when you're creating positive pressure situation in your room, you're going to want to filter that air 
with um, sorry my cat is going crazy back there I hope you guys don't mind um, they usually get hyped up in the morning but I like to see these uh, beautiful sunrises anyway filtration is important to create positive pressure because you don't want to just keep pumping in dirty air into your clean room so obviously you're going to want to filter that I recommend using a HEPA filter so if you're in a BSL-3 lab, typically you'll see them on the ceilings and it's constantly forcing air from the cleanest part of the room down 24-7. So that if there's any bugs that are trying to fly into underneath the doorway or um, just dust from if you're sweeping outside of the lab, you don't want to have that dust enter your lab. So it's just a constant flow of pressure that's going into your room. So then that brings us to negative pressure. So what is negative pressure? Negative pressure is fluid being pulled out of a defined area. So you can do this with exhaust. Um, just if you're if you're in like a, a wind tunnel and you place an object with a, a seam or a hole in it and the wind is flying past that, it's also going to create a negative pressure inside that vessel. Some filters work that way, like a peristaltic pump filter. Um, you can run water and then create a vacuum almost which creates negative pressure and then you can filter out different solutions that way. I guess it's not a peristaltic pump because it's going to connect to your sink. When you're designing your laboratory make sure that you're using positive pressure. When you're using fresh air exchange in your grow room make sure that you're using negative pressure. So um, in, your, in your grow tent, um, you should have an exhaust that's constantly blowing out, and then it's going to pull that air, which is high concentration of CO2, out of your building, and then it's going to introduce fresh air with more concentration of oxygen. So taking away the CO2, adding oxygen, that's going to be your negative um, air exchange in, in your grow room. Sorry. Um, so we're going to go back and answer that question from the beginning. So what type of pressure do you need in your laboratory? Is it going to be A, negative, B, positive, C, neutral, or D, none of the above? So the correct answer is B, positive pressure, because you want to filter that air in, and if you're using positive pressure, you're going to have control over that filter so it's going to concentrate the air being pumped in you're going to have your HEPA filter and then pushing it into the room and then any air going to exit the room and then any air that's in a seam if you have a window which you shouldn't really have windows in your lab but if there's a window or just cracks inside the the walls it's going to force that air outside to prevent any contamination um, from coming inside all right, guys, um, if you answered that question correctly, congratulations. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on how I create positive pressure really easily. It's pretty simple, so I'll do a video on that. But stay tuned for more mycology videos like these. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos. I'm, I like doing these uh, sit-down videos just because I have a chance to kind of express my thoughts. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this little segment on fluid dynamics and mycology. I'm going to finish my coffee here and enjoy this beautiful sunrise in Sedalia. Alright guys, until next time, much love.